Welcome to the Carbon Stations podcast, where we speak to some of the leading figures in the emerging carbon industry. Today, our guest is Rachel Delacour, CEO and founder of Sweep, a company that offers one of the most sophisticated all-in-one carbon tools for corporate emission management. The software provides the functionality necessary for companies to keep track of the CO2 emissions across their entire value chain, which includes mapping, measuring, reducing, and reporting. Uh, Rachel, it's a pleasure to meet you and have you here with us today. So before we get into uh, what Sweep does, actually, it would be lovely to get to know a little bit more about your background and what brought you to carbon accounting. Okay, thank you, Violet. Um, I hope I won't be too annoying when it comes <laughs> to data, data, and data. <laughs> so yeah, so Sweep, it's, um, it's a software platform where actually business intelligence meets carbon and ESG management. And... Uh, I will tell you about my startup journey, uh, which has led me here. But uh, what you have to know is that I already started the first company called Biome Analytics in uh, uh, 2009. And it was all about democratizing data analytics, making it uh, more affordable and uh, accessible for small and uh, medium-sized uh, businesses. And um, yeah, just becoming an entrepreneur at this time was not really uh, part of the, of the plan. Uh, it just came from a desire to address the challenges and the frustration that I encountered as a financial accountant. Yes, I was using outdated and very pricey uh, business intelligence tools. So um, I started by analytics and I have this strong background in, uh, in terms of uh, analytics, data, uh, distributed infrastructure, et cetera. And this is important for the, for the current story at Sweep. And uh, yeah, so I, I've been acquired by, uh, for this company uh, was acquired by Zendesk years ago. And uh, I continued my um, analytics journey, um, you know, within a, a very important company, very large at scale, you know, serving lots of uh, analytics uh, uh, to the world. Um, and after not, um, you know, so I was working there and after not being able to answer uh, uh, just very very easy questions from my uh, kids uh, about climate change. I decided to dive into the IPC, the latest IPCC report uh, I got at uh, this time. It was in 2019. And this is how I saw the, actually the emergency of the situation and that I decided to take action. And uh, the, the, you know, just before starting, I, I called many former CEOs of, uh, you know, who were customers. Uh, of my first business and they, they, they were all telling me, Rachel, it's actually why we are not acting more at the moment. It's because carbon, it's a, it's a vertiginous problem. It's a, it's a data problem. It's a network problem. And, you know, the more they were, uh, we were having those discussions, the more I understood that actually given uh, the background I had in business intelligence and business management, I saw that we could really help uh, companies to act on their uh, uh, you know, on their carbon reduction uh, emissions by uh, giving them the right software, the right tech uh, strategy also. Uh, so I joined Foxes with my, uh, uh, with uh, the product designer, Rafael Guller and uh, engineer Yannick uh, Chaz. We've been knowing each other for 15 years. And uh, we also from day one uh, invited carbon experts, uh, you know, to really strengthen that climate slash carbon slash ESG expertise to build SWEEP all together. So to productize it uh, in um, one of the latest uh, uh, carbon and ESG business intelligence platform. Can you describe uh, the first days of SWEEP? Um, so yes, you said uh, you, you attracted carbon experts, um, but what was it like to to attract clients in those very, very first days? Uh, what was really interesting is that uh, we've managed to attract uh, very, very large companies at first. So we had no uh, fundings that uh, while we already had very large companies uh, at, already at scale, you know, because uh, they were really interested in this tech um, stack, um, really helping them to have, a, a, yeah, just to apply business intelligence in the non-financial world, in the extra-financial world, having, you know, granularity, uh, access to their uh, to their uh, extra financial data and to make sure they were really understanding their carbon footprint emissions on a regular basis to better act on it. So the fact that we were giving them that that kind of tools um, and the fact that they absolutely needed to connect all the dots at a global scale 
this is why we were much more, um, you know, interesting for large companies who were really struggling with Excel sheets or with in-house um, tools. Uh, while, you know, connecting uh, what we are calling the infamous uh, scope 3 is something that is uh, really hard. So they were understanding that um, a shift in terms of technology was uh, happening. Innovation was, uh, you know, knocking at their door. And for us, it was also a, a fantastic way to discover that, okay, with that kind of, te of technologies, we were able to help the biggest agent of change, actually, at a, at a worldwide scale, you know, to, to act on their, uh, on their emissions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is uh, the first day that actually where normally you are trying just to to sell your, your solutions to, to your first, uh, you know, your friends, I would say. So in my case, it could have been uh, tech entrepreneurs, but uh, they were not the biggest agent. You know, they are a meeting, but not as the indust some industries. So, so, yeah, so our goal was really to build that uh, that platform that, uh, you know, to, to, to streamline carbon and ESG data platform in one single, uh, single place and uh, to address the biggest uh, emitters uh, worldwide with their, you know, huge uh, complexity uh, and, uh, yeah, just uh, being able to mask that complexity for them. Okay. Um, so if, if you were to describe exactly what Sweep's platform does to someone who's just barely being faced with the reality of, of carbon emissions and the need to reduce yeah. them and report on them, what would you say to them? Yeah, I would say, so a little bit of what I just said before about, okay, it's all about, uh, Sweep, it's about helping businesses to streamline their carbon and ESG data management so that they can track, disclose, and act on their emissions in one single place, okay? So it's really important to not have a, a, a thousand layers of different um, software, uh, you know, to deal with your uh, carbon and ESG data management. So we are, uh, the, the platform allows uh, them, companies to connect with their value chain, okay, to map direct, but also indirect GHG emissions. Um, it provides a very clear overall picture of the emissions. And this helps actually companies to make intelligent decisions on where to prioritize uh, their climate action. So we help companies to create um, also what's super important at the end of the day, audit ready reports in order to comply with the latest uh, ESG regulations. And I am sure, Violet, that you are uh, kind of um, uh, familiar with uh, those uh, acron um, acronyms, um, CSRD, SFDR, okay? Yes, yes, for <laughs> so sure. It's, it's all about, yeah, opening the books at the end of the day to, uh, yeah, to be compliant and to go beyond, okay, to, to, to take action. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned scope three emissions or, or supply chain emissions. I, I know it's a very, very complex matter. And um, yeah. I remember we published a very interesting opinion piece of yours earlier this year uh, on the Carbon Herald website. Uh, I'll include a link for it in the description. But uh, for our audience, could you please uh, dive into why scope three emissions are so important to reckon with? And uh, perhaps on a more practical note, how does Sweep's new tool help address them? Yeah, so the infamous <laughs> scope three. And thanks to digital, fortunately, uh, digital is doing magic, connect all the dots of that uh, infamous uh, scope three emission. Um, emissions. Uh, so yeah, so scope three emissions, they are, uh, of course, notoriously uh, hard to measure because they, they come from sources not directly controlled, controlled by a company, you know, but, uh, that they are still the results of its product or services sold. Think about the emissions of um, all your suppliers, for example, it's an extended and shared responsibility of um, everyone, you know, in this industry supply chain. So um, COP3, you know, th those emissions they are uh, important because they account for a very, very, very huge proportion of companies' emissions. Think about at least 70% if it's not 90% in, um, in some cases. So they absolutely need those, you know, COP3 emissions. They need to be effectively measured mm -hmm. and managed if companies want to achieve their climate targets. So we sweep uh, under, you know, with the distributed uh, infrastructure, um, we help companies to easily exchange carbon data with their suppliers 
so that they can consolidate it, you know, in one single place, so that they can get a comprehensive overview of their direct and indirect emissions. And starting from here, they can take, uh, they can make data-driven uh, business de decisions in order to efficiently meet their um, climate objectives at the scale of a, a whole sector, at the scale of a, a company, uh, you know, a, a company claim. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for this, you need, a, it's one thing to understand that you have, um, you know, to cope with those scopes to, to measure and manage these uh, scopes three emissions, but it's, um, you need, you know, the right technology to do this uh, and not just estimates. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's super important to, uh, well, yeah, to just to, to navigate uh, all this uh, at scale and in a very, the most precise way as possible. Uh, so I, I imagine there would be a lot of data points that companies need to provide in order to actually gain accurate calculations. Yeah. Yeah. Plus you have to do this on a very regular basis. So doing that exercise at scale regularly uh, to, to track um, a trajectory of uh, the, the trajectory of the, how you are reducing your emissions. It's uh, if you are not doing that exercise at such scale, you know, on a regular basis, it's very difficult. So for this, you need to have the right uh, digital tools um, helping you to mask that complexity of, uh, because it, this is uh, even more complex than any uh, financial, um, you know, exercise actually, because you have to go beyond your internal information systems. Okay. You have to trigger that collective climate action, collective discussion with your supply chain. If you are not using the right digital solutions, it's a nightmare. And you are, you are, you are old uh, back, uh, in terms of, um, uh, action. Okay. Yes. So important to start now, start even small, be, be sure to be, be choose the right solutions to make sure you are growing you are able to scale your action, but, uh, start now, definitely. And speaking of solutions, does, uh, does Sweep actually offer, um, possible solutions for, for companies to either mitigate, limit or, or offset their emissions? Yeah. So we are uh, giving, um, um, a library of, um, you know, um, smart, uh, smart initiatives, uh, to reduce, uh, their, uh, their emissions, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, when you are giving, but more than this, as long as, as a company, you are understanding where your emissions are coming from, how you can engage, uh, that team, you know, that local team in the tool to make sure that everyone is having the, the, you know, the, 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 the right ideas to reduce the emissions, you know, the more you are able to be close to the emission point, the more you are able to reduce it. Uh, think and, and the, the digital platform that you are using must be able to engage and connect local teams, local people who are able to act on the emissions, um, uh, at a, at a local scale. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, 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 uh, it's great to have, uh, benchmarks and ideas on how to initiate how to start to know how to mitigate that's mm -hmm. definitely great and it but it has to come with a way to engage the people who are the closest to the emission points okay mm -hmm. because when you are in your headquarters in paris in london or elsewhere and you have uh, plenty of uh, of uh, industrial sites for example in the world when there is uh, you know there is nothing better than the the local team to think about how they can reduce their emissions instead of uh, one person in one, uh, you know, worldwide at, at quarter, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. So yeah, so digital, digital, digital da data points, data points and data points. <laughs> okay. To make data driven decision and, uh, people already have the, the solutions actually, but it's more about what you have to prioritize, uh, how you benchmark it in your market. And, um, and, uh, how you are able to, to, I would say, um, uh, initiate, uh, you know, all those conversations with the local supply chain as well. Yes. Thank you. Um, now for something that I, I strive to get everyone's opinion on, because it's, it's such a controversial matter and it's just about on everyone's minds, uh, especially now carbon credits, 
Um, I'm sure you've heard about the recent scandals with low quality credits and that undermine people's trust in, in the voluntary carbon market. What are your thoughts on this and what role do you believe carbon markets are playing or have yet to play in mitigating the climate crisis? My point on this is that um, it's all about, uh, again, I'm sorry to be uh, to be insisting, but it's all about data points. It's all about how you are able to open the books, how you are able to be audited. We all have to acknowledge that we are at the start of, um, you know, this uh, also well, I'll set, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the voluntary carbon market, um, there is plenty of things that has, have to change, definitely. But we must continue to uh, help uh, projects uh, which are good for climate, projects who are good for the, you know, for natural things, okay? For all the, we need in parallel of reducing your emissions, a company must, must, must help, you know, and offset as, as they can. Of course, they must, uh, uh, you know, carbon credit have a place in contributing to uh, climate action. But indeed, projects should be uh, high quality and address uh, local, social and ecological issues. Okay. But um, we all acknowledge that company should uh, choose verified projects uh, because of the, the latest uh, uh, scandals, as you said, but it's, uh, we all have to acknowledge that that uh, industry is also, um, you know, um, uh, getting attention, uh, opening the books more and more, you know, finding a way to be auditable. And it's, uh, it has to be encouraged, definitely, because we don't have the choice. Okay, we must help, we must, uh, companies must do their part. Uh, in terms of reductions of their emissions, but also in terms of how they are helping uh, voluntary carbon markets, you know, and projects to thrive, despite at some point the current process of uh, improving auditability, etc. Okay, uh, it shouldn't be stopped from one day to another just because of uh, local uh, local um, uh, scandals. It, those scandals are actually uh, healthy. I would say to, to make sure that the whole industry is getting better at it, is being uh, uh, better to open the books. We need that. Uh, but it's, um, it's also part of the start. Okay. Of, it's, uh, it's an early industry, early stage industry. On that note, I do have a question that is uh, closer to home. Does Sweep practice what it preaches within the company as far as reducing emissions goes? And if so, can you provide some examples of how you do that? Uh, so some examples, uh, we are, uh, we started as a fully remote, uh, company, but, uh, we also acknowledge that, uh, you know, we, it was, um, important for, uh, for some of our teammates to also regroup in some, uh, hubs. So we have uh, headquarters in uh, London and in Paris, also in Montpellier and the South of France, but most of us are, um, remote. Okay. Workers. And uh, it helps definitely to, to mitigate our, um, our emissions. For example, uh, you know, sometimes because the company uh, um, has, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we are, um, we are, we, we've grown, uh, you know, uh, very fast from a, from a number of people standpoint in this team. So we would love, you know, to be able to meet on a much more regular basis, you know, with offsites or else, but it's, uh, we make the decision to only meet uh, once a year. So sometimes, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy when you have uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, hyper growth uh, in terms of people. But, uh, but yes, this is also part of uh, how we are mitigating uh, our um, carbon emissions. We are very, very, um, we are following our uh, carbon intensity per uh, employee. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that uh, it's, not, um, it's not increasing. And uh, for example, as for myself, um, I was not at the climate uh, a uh, week in New York City uh, last week uh, because of uh, choices, also because of trade-offs that I am making uh, with my personal uh, flight uh, per year, for example. Mm -hmm. So this is all uh, kind of things that we, and and uh, I must say that, uh, yeah, the fact that we, we are also seeing our customers struggling at some point, you know, to, to mitigate or when they, you know, it's so great for my teams also to understand how hard it is, how we can help. So it's a way also for us to, uh, 
you know, to learn uh, fast at a personal level, at a company level, uh, from the ones who are leading the way as well. So we try to do our part also being that kind of a repository of uh, best practices we are learning uh, from our customers, for other customers, okay? So yes, we, we are also part of, uh, hopefully, this, uh, these discussions, okay? Plus oiling the climate action for themselves. Certainly, yes. And uh, I think it's really important that you're also setting an example uh, in doing so. Um, just another question, like how do you, um, or what do you take into account when you measure employees' uh, emissions? Is it only with regards to like business travel or is it in their within their personal lives as well? Um, as we are, um, uh, yes, personal house, uh, yes, it's, uh, we are measuring the the part of their um, house, you know, how the, 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 the place where they are working, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, that portion, you know, dedicated to, dedicated to work, but it's mostly, definitely, it's mostly uh, uh, about their commutes, uh, about their, uh, their travel, their, their, their work, their, sorry, their business travels. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's about uh, when we are gathering, you know, uh, our sites or, uh, uh, but also their uh, IT uh, consumptions. Um, so yeah, so we are trying to, we are trying to give them, uh, as many ease as possible, you know, to mm -hmm. understand the intensity, understand what they can do. You know, they are, they are, they are talking a lot, a lot all together, you know, uh, uh, in terms of uh, how they are organizing their remote work mm -hmm. and, uh, of, for the people, for, for the part of our team who are in, um, in offices, in co-working space. Which definitely try to work with the co-working spaces that are uh, very sensitive uh, to that. So we are trying in Paris, for example, we are working with a, a co-working space uh, um, and they are a B Corp. So it means a lot also in terms of uh, environmental uh, impact. So yes, we try to have always, always this uh, in mind. But uh, you know, our day to day is uh, is so full of uh, of. Uh, these considerations in mind that uh, it's not becoming part of our DNA. I can't say that we are a kind of aliens or that we have <laughs> muted, you know, being mutant. You know, I don't know how to say that in English, but uh, yeah, we, it's, well, <laughs> uh, I guess that we are. Uh, it's part of who becoming... you are now. Uh, yes, 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 we have to. It's, uh, it's all about eating our own dog food and, uh, <laughs> We are a B Corp as well, so we have to score in the environmental part uh, also. So yes, you know, many, many, many ways to not to never be accustomed to a, a particular path. You know, uh, now it's all really about trying to do our best um, every day, and uh, but it's uh, it's not easy. Definitely, it's not easy to to be uh, to be carbon neutral. You know, we can't. We can't, and we have understood that. So this is also why when some of our customers or prospects are saying, uh, saying, oh, yes, yes, we've been, uh, we are carbon neutral uh, uh, this year, uh, or, or this is a carbon neutral product. So I'm just uh, also giving a poke to the <laughs> latest uh, Apple, Apple announcement <laughs> recently about a carbon neutral product. No, 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 it's just impossible. You can at best be aligned to the carbon neutral to the global carbon neutrality uh, at a worldwide scale, you know, but you can't be carbon neutral. Everything is emitting. The, the, the fact that I'm recording this podcast with you, I am emitting carbon today. So you can't be carbon neutral. So, so yes, first also it's uh, hopefully we are transparent about our, uh, our um, we are not carbon neutral. So we try mm -hmm. uh, to, to tell this also to, to, to our customers and, to tell companies that they need to be careful about the language they, they use when they talk about uh, their use of carbon uh, credits, about how they are launching, you know, a carbon neutral product. This is not possible. So, but but you can work on your intensity. You can uh, open the books, open the books, open the books to your employees, to your investors, to your uh, to your customers. This is the best way to. Uh, progress actually and to be on the right path instead of just claiming your carbon neutral is not possible yes uh, thank you I, I think that's actually very important uh, that you make this distinction of uh, what carbon neutrality means actually and yeah uh, the fact that it's it's not exactly something achievable at this point 
or not something that we have achieved or anyone can claim they have. Exact, exactly. So you can't, uh, you can't be Apple and claim that you are carbon neutral. Definitely, uh, there is a science that is showing you that uh, by A plus B that it's not possible. But that's fantastic to uh, celebrate progresses of uh, large companies because they are leading the change. They are the biggest agent of change, and when they are doing their best to be aligned on carbon global uh, neutrality, fantastic. Let's do more, and next year let's do even be better. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and communicate about it, but don't communicate on the fact that you are carbon neutral. This is misleading, and this is actually uh, it's a pity because it's uh, kind of uh, you know uh, deleting, erasing, uh, cancelling all the 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 efforts that the whole company uh, has done. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, so well, so this is uh, this is uh, communications are is incredibly important and. Uh, now that there is so many literature uh, on the web, you know, about car global carbon neutrality, etc., that kind of companies, very large ones, they, 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 they you know, it's uh, they can't, they can't fall uh, in this trap. Mm -hmm. Okay, they, they, they have too, they are, too, they have too many, uh, too many smart people, you know, uh, working for them uh, to not uh, fall in this kind of trap. Okay, so 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 they have to to lead the change also by how they are communicating and of course how they are factually acting. Yes, and um, a final question before we wrap up the episode, and I can let you go. Uh, what's your observation of how quickly companies are beginning to keep track of and start taking steps to limit their emissions? Yeah, what I have seen in the last uh, during the during last year is um, how fast companies understood. Two points. The first one is that, okay, they acknowledged that understanding your emissions, tracking it to better also disclose it. It's a transformational project that we have to uh, lead at the scale of the company. It's not just the CSR department. And the second point is that because they've understood that it's a, a global IT project, that it's uh, uh, not only in the end of uh, the CSR department, Second point is that they have worked uh, a lot on the governance of this kind of project, okay? And the governance to make sure that that transformational or that, you know, transition to a low carbon economy must be, um, you know, uh, uh, led by uh, the CFO, the CEO, of course, the CPO, Chief Procurement Officer, the CTO, the CSR, uh, the CSO, Chief Sustainability Officer. So I have seen that acceleration this year about understanding that it's not just Excel sheets or uh, very, uh, you know, light uh, reporting uh, tools uh, that are needed, but it's, uh, it's uh, because of the granularity that is necessary and because of the audit, it's all about an IT project because you have to open the books. Sorry to insist, but it's always, always the same story. And, and second, the fact that they have organized a governance, this is where I'm seeing the most advanced customers uh, today, you know, in our portfolio, um, uh, who are really shifting, you know, uh, uh, their, uh, their, their, yeah, their understanding of what is at stake, actually. And if they want to be a resilient through time, if they want to, uh, uh, to take care of their top line, of their bottom line, of their uh, employee uh, brand, of their uh, cash uh, treasury, and funding uh, because uh, because you need to 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 be aligned with uh, in Europe with what the with the collaterals of the European Central Bank, uh, and not following your carbon and ESG uh, data is a, a threat actually. And uh, yeah, you must be resilient. You must be be part of the Forever Company Club. You know, in the next ten years. So uh, so yes, yeah, so it's all. Um, I have seen much that acceleration. Uh, and it's led by the regulation, and definitely, definitely. Thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, this has been a genuinely insightful conversation, and uh, I really appreciate you making the time for it. It was a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Violet. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this episode of the Carbon Stations podcast and would like to hear more conversations like this, please be sure to subscribe. We really appreciate the support. <laughs>